Hey everyone, it's Dave here from Band of Badgers. Now we've done one of these before. We've had the uh, dungeon kit, um, or the Dungeoneers kit. Now this is the Dungeon Masters kit, uh, Dungeon Masters screen from D&D. &D. Um, and this is the first one that was released. So check out, uh, if you look up here, you should see a link to our previous uh, unboxing of this. It's just, a, it's just basically having a look at what this is all about. So I'm a big fan of Dungeon Master screens. I love predominantly for the artwork that's involved. Um, but this was the first one that came out. The second one is now out and available. So this is all specifically for the wilderness. It has beautiful artwork. Um, and here we go. It mentions here on the bottom, venture into the wilds with this kit for the world's greatest role-playing game. Now, on the back, uh, we have the details of Charter Course. This kit equips the Dungeon Master with a screen and other tools that are perfect for running D&D adventures in the wilderness. The Dungeon Master screen features a gorgeous painting of fantasy, fantasy landscapes. And it really, I mean, again, I've mentioned that uh, I've got a few of these kind of dungeon screens. This is definitely my favorite. This is the one, it's now my go-to just for the artwork. Not necessarily for the details inside, but definitely for the artwork. So anyway, uh, on the outside, and useful rules references over the inside of the screen with an emphasis on wilderness rules. This kit also includes the following five dry erase sheets featuring hex maps, food and water tracker, rules references, specifically uh, we've got wilderness chases, wilderness journeys, and the actions you can take in combat, 27 cards that make it easy to keep track of conditions, initiative, and environmental effects, which are perfect if you have a new team or a bunch of beginners, it's great for that, and one box to hold the kit's cards. Now I haven't, I haven't used that. Um, but uh, it is available inside. If you do, it's like a flat pack box. But anyway, enough of that. Let's have a look inside. So, um, again, if you've seen our previous video, inside the Dungeoneers kit, you had a nice purple sheen with the amber sand. This one, uh, you've got a shades of green, and you might just be able to pick up on the camera there. There are kind of leaves on that one. You can see the patterns. It's not fingerprint marks. Those are leaves. Now down here, we also have the amber sand. They've got a very hex on this one as well. And then you've got the creative team is mentioned below. Now, here we have wilderness journeys. So these are sheets to basically, uh, they are protected. They're laminated sheets, a wet and dry erase. So you can make, you can scribble on them if you need to, but you can hand, around, hand them around the table. And if anyone spills a drink, heaven forbid, they won't get damaged. So. This is specifically for wilderness, wilderness journeys. This sheet provides guidelines for playing through wilderness travel and for keeping track of supplies during the journey. Now this is all about random encounters um, and checks that you can make with your party. This is fantastic for homebrew campaigns. All the tools that you need are right here, especially if you end up getting a whole set of dungeon screens. As I said, right as we're doing this, there are only two. So you can do checks on uh, weather, pace, navigation, encounters, supplies, and progress. What to do if, you're, if your team become lost? And a very small random encounter table, uh, which is some really nice stuff on here, actually. I mean, look, the group wanders into, into, into a strange place, roll on the weird locales table, two to four hostile creatures prowl nearby, the DM chooses a creature. Some really nice bits and pieces. Now on the back, you've got some more random events. We have monuments. So you can quite quickly put together a very skillful random encounter, not just with creatures, but the little kind of environment where the players find themselves. The weird locales, nice to have on a D20 rule. That's also a D20 rule. Food and water. Um, if you're counting supplies, which we, sometimes we tend not to do if it's a dungeon dungeon delve. It depends on how long they're really down there and how much you want to make your team prep. Um, if you're a very experienced player's team, it's it's a lot of great fun. It really is, especially looking at what uh, resources available, just like resource games. It really does seem to work. Um, food and water needs, how you breaks down, tiny to gargantuan. We have tracking your supplies, which is another sheet in the pack as well, and foraging. You, just in case you don't have a ranger. Always useful. Plus you can use those if you have a ranger. So a handy sheet to kind of keep behind the DM shield, wilderness journeys, wilderness chases. So here you go. When a chase begins in the wilderness, the DM can use these rules to determine whether the pursuer catches their quarry. 
Corey, Corey. I'll try and get that word right next time. Um, so playing the game, you can establish your positions, you roll initiative, roll for a complication, move and take an action, begin the next round. Now, here are the chase complications. Now, I've used I've used a table similar to this, which is in, I think it's in the DM's, DM's guide, for uh, city complications. You're chasing someone on foot, you're going down alleyways, through marketplaces, uh, through the shops, through houses, and different things that you can pull in in to uh, get rid of a pursuer, or things that you, if you're chasing someone, will put in front of you and how you get around them. This is exactly the same thing. So here's, for example, it says, this is a D20 rule, roll number six, a sudden drop catches you by surprise, make a DC 10 dexterity saving throw. On a failed save, you fall, and you take bludgeoning damage. Oh, and you're gonna land prone. So very, very simple things. But if you imagine you were running through wilderness, I mean, take take the scenes from uh, Lord of the Rings. You know, when, uh, when they're chase, chasing after the orcs, it, complete open wilderness. You don't know what you're gonna do. You can jump over mounds of, uh, of earth or rock, chasing after people, dashing. Dashing can be affected in the wilderness. What are your reactions? Ending a chase. Maybe you chase them down into a dead end and they can't climb out. There's, there's lots of little uh, help and advice and escaping. Very useful. Splitting up, never split the party, and roll reversal. What if the one you're pursuing, suddenly now you become the prey? Maybe they, maybe they meet uh, others on their way, you know? They, one bandit wanted to chase you, because you think, yeah, we we'll take take out one bandit, and he chases you into a trap location. So, really nice items on here, wilderness chasers. Now, you also have a supply tracker. Again, this is suitable for wet and dry race. Food carried and used, simple, just tick off the sheets, blah, 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 blah. and for water. Again, really useful if that's the kind of uh, game you want to play. Again, very, very handy. On the other side, a hex map. Now, when you're out in the wilderness, if you've seen any of the, the big kind of poster maps, and many of them use hex, because this is not five feet per box. This could be 100 meters, or it could be five miles. So this allows maybe the players, or even you as a DM, to create a landscape of an area. So you might have a ravine with a river running through, uh, a rope bridge over the top. Maybe there's different ways across. Maybe as you're explaining the environment, your players are then mapping this out and they can come back to that. Again, it's wet wipe, so if it is a player's map, they might want to take a photo of it just in case they rub it off by accident. Or where's the buried treasure? There's another really good one. So you have one side of the hex map on the, uh, on the supply tracker. You also, again, great for new players, actions in combat. What to do? So you can attack, cast a spell, dash, disengage, dodge, help, all the usual bits and pieces, but this is a great reference for someone to have in front of them. Um, the DM won't need it. DM should hopefully uh, remember all these, but if not, they're also included on your DM shield. If not, this is an extra copy. But I find it great when I'm playing with newbies, introduce newbies to the great game of D&D, &D, then they have a reference in front of them. And they can pass this around, you know, it stays on the table. On the back, you have an additional hex map. So you get the one on a supply tracker. So again, you can keep one, the party can keep one. You have one on the actions in combat and you have a double-sided one. There you go. So plenty to hand around and move around. Lots of references on the table. Now, as always in these kits, you get a series of cards. Now let's look at these ones. These are the condition cards with a twist. So we have the 12 conditions and again, the useful references, great art, artwork as always. I think he's been a little bit tipsy. And you get, uh, here, it's a more grappled, incapacitated, frightened, of course it would be as a dragon, invisible, paralyzed, petrified, just, and on the back you have the, what it, what it, what it would do to work against you. Okay, so all of these pieces has a simple description. And again, you, it's perforated, you tear them, you hand them to the players. If they're new players, these are really, really handy for, to have them in front of you. 
it's not it's some of you know it's, it's easy to say okay you're grappled but what are the how does that work against you as a player so just having that on there is really really quite cool. good to have now on this one we have some extras we've got because this is a wilderness theme we have extreme cold extreme heat and strong wind and you get some extra <laughs> extra artwork on there as well okay don't try and fire your bow in strong wind so you have those really nice to have you also have your initiative trackers now this is using the artwork that appears on the dm shield which is absolutely beautiful it's it's kind of got a matte silk finish um this one is is my favorite panel but we'll come to that so these are the initiative cards just to uh, help you uh, decide initiative around the table. So each person, each player can have a card in front of them. I go third, person next to me is going fourth, or however you want to do it, however it's shuffled. And you can have the monsters, you can have those for the DM as well. On the back, you've got the nice ampersand. Quite clearly states what it is, initiative. This is the pop-out box. So um, I haven't popped this one out, because uh, I don't tend to use these ones. But uh, you know lockdown has prevented us from being around the table we're slowly getting back to our table and actually um the wilderness i'll be able to use in my icewind dale campaign coming up in 2022 when i finally get to use my beetling grimm's frost maiden box in person right so that and you get a green inside again there's some kind of uh, leaves imprinted on that and you've got a hex so that's just the inside of the box you're not really going to see it but gorgeous artwork on the outside of the box. There's a green dragon. Now, here's the best bit of the whole thing. This is gorgeous. This is my favorite panel. I mean, look at that. Maybe your players cross through the mountains and on the other side, it's just a desolate wasteland. Maybe that's the start of the desert. But look, it's this massive crater with a sunken ship. Or pirate ship. Where's all the water gone? Was there a harbour? Is this an ancient civilization? Who knows? But gorgeous. You get a little amber sand in the corner as well. So connecting to that panel, and they slowly connect. So if you follow the mountains, they will slowly connect, which is a really nice picture. I love it when they do this. They did it. There's a fourth edition DM screen that I've got, which is the the Underdark, and it was a really nice piece. And I'm so glad they've kind of redone that. So here we go. We have a, a white dragon on top of the mountains. Gorgeous. Then, as that connects, we go into a bit of the next mountain range or next wilderness range. You got forest plains leading up into the mountains with a green dragon you can see the detail on the dragon there that is beautiful it's really beautiful painted and then that one leads into my next favorite panel takes you all the way down from the so you go from the mountains through the forests into a, maybe the coastline and look you got another ancient ruins built on top of a ledge or maybe that's crumbled away who knows and what could be i don't think that's a giant squid i think that's something like a kraken it's beautiful artwork so on the inside you've pretty much got the standard dm shield again with a few variant twists because this is the wilderness kit Okay, so we've seen some of this before. Let's open that one. There's your conditions. So they are repeated on the inside for the for the DM. You've got weather effects, extreme cold, extreme heat, strong wind. So those three cards you saw earlier, they are repeated. Again, so you can make sure that you can hand those out to your players. You won't need them because you've got the set. And then on the final panel, some more wilderness specific. So travel pace, various services, encounter distance, 
wilderness navigation also depend on what kind of terrain it is and you, you got it i think a lot of people think wilderness is just empty ground but it's not i mean look it's forest it's jungles it's swamps it's mountains open sea arctic you've got grasslands meadows and farmland there audible distance sound travels when there's nothing blocking it cover light obscured areas visibility outdoors your vessel speeds so if you uh, i was going to say if, you, if these are boats but you've got an airship really nice food drink and lodging basic prices you know i think too often we go into a tavern and if someone someone buys a round of uh, round of drinks we tend to charge them like one gold piece but look a mug of ale or gallon is two silver pieces so my tavern keepers are making some money and foraging dc so there you go that is the set um as i said there are two of these out available now you've got the dungeoneers kit or the dungeons kit and the wilderness kit all of these uh both of them both sets are really really nice and fit into the little folio like that so you can always keep it nice and tidy if you want to give it i've personally got a dm's kit so uh, i've already just put that together for the video but all of this gear is in my dm's kit ready to go there we go well i hope you enjoyed that remember to check out our youtube channel at youtube.com slash band of badgers hit that subscribe button anything you can do to help us is always appreciated until next time i'll see you soon bye bye